I just ask uh, you to tell us a little bit about your background? Um, what do I do? Uh, well, I'm actually a neuroscientist. And so what that means is that I study the brain and I study how the brain is put together, how it's connected, what drugs do to the brain, and what happens when things in the brain go wrong. Can you just give us an idea about why it is that men are so hooked on porn? Most of the websites that you're going to see are visited by men because they're, they're looking for sexually explicit material usually. And uh, I, I think there is something, as, as I've studied the brain, I think there is something about being made male that actually wires your brain up in such a way that it sort of causes you to have a predisposition to wanting to look for this kind of, of, of stimulation, wanting to kind of find out where this stuff is in the world. And that's why you're seeing that one in four of these, uh, these website visits are going to be from men rather than women. And these days it's just so accessible, isn't it? It's incredibly accessible. I mean, it's, it's something you can get on your smartphone. It's something that you can get at the click of a button. Uh, it's actually something that you can get even by doing a search for something that has nothing to do with pornography at all. So you can stumble across it accidentally because so much of the material that's out there is not just sort of waiting for you to come visit. It's also material that's actively searching these men out. And so it's popping up in their emails uh, as unsolicited uh, email connections. It's popping up on the sides of the websites that they're visiting. So it's accessible, it's, and it's also very affordable. The majority of the pornography that's available now is free. You don't have to pay anything for it at all. And so that provides another problem. And the third problem that really I think many people sometimes refer to them as the three A's. There's the accessibility, the affordability, and finally the one that is I think most crucial, which is the anonymity. You don't have to go to a, a dirty bookstore or to an adult store anymore to pick up pornographic material. You can do it in the privacy of your own home. And even in your own home, if you've got kids or you've got a, a spouse, you can just go off into a room by yourself and lock the door. And there you have that ability to get it. It's easy and no one knows that you're getting it. All processes by which we experience the world come in through the nervous system. So we would say, well, pornography, obviously the, the first thing you have to talk about is the visual signal. So there's an image that's coming in and it's kind of sent into the eyes and the eyes pick it up and they then send it back through the optic nerves to the deep part of the brain called the thalamus. And the thalamus is like a sensory relay station where sights and sounds are sort of collected together and packaged together. But the visual signal comes through the eyes and goes to this thalamus. And then from the thalamus it gets sent to the back part of the brain. And this is sometimes referred to as the visual cortex. So if you look at a person's uh, your brain image when they're viewing something, you see an incredible amount of activity back here in, in the brain. But what we do know is in these studies, if we show someone a sexual signal, you will actually get a different kind of activation of this visual system. And normally when we look out into the world and we see, you know, a, a lovely skyline or we see, you know, a picture of some flowers or something, that visual system is active. But we see that the visual system is set up to also be ready for when sexual signals come in to activate other circuits, activate circuits of arousal. And so where normal images don't sort of arouse you, there are sometimes things that we, we see with sexual images, sexual cues come in, and especially in men, they, they activate this visual part in an, incred in an incredible way when compared to just you know, looking at roses or looking at a skyline. So in men especially, I think you see this as very problematic with pornography because the sexual images come in, they, uh, hyper they hyperactivate this part of the brain, and they also send a deeper signal down to deep parts of the brain that sort of light a fire, uh, neurologically speaking, to cause arousal, to cause excitement. And that excitement builds energy that sort of gets the person's attention, and that energy has to be dealt with in some way. And so what will happen is men will try to find themselves aroused and drawn further into this and the problem arises because they become overly focused on just the sexual cues and the more they focus on it the more they kind of apply wood to this fire and the more they begin this process of increasing the arousal increasing the desire and and so what pornography does is not only does it kind of work through the normal visual system but it also imposes arousal on the system as well
So this can lead to a hypersexuality? I, I think it most certainly can. And when you look at the behavioral patterns of people, especially people who are looking, to, looking at pornography you know, repeatedly over and over again, what you find is that it's maybe not hypersexuality in that they're, they're acting out with a partner. It might be that they're acting out you know, by themselves, they're acting out alone. And so what happens then is they get into the cycle where they become very preoccupied. And because it's affordable and it's easy to access and it can be done sort of in secret anonymously, they find themselves sort of becoming very preoccupied with it. And, you know, sexual images come in and it's not like they come in and then they bounce out. They come in and they change you neurologically. And when you sexually act out, you're changed neurologically as well. And so you get caught into this pattern whereby you think more about it and as you think more about it, it causes more arousal and so you get in this pattern whereby some people call it, you know, pornography addiction. And in many ways, that is really what it has become. So many men feel that pornography can enhance their intimacy, but that's not really the case. I mean, many men will make the argument that pornography actually serves as a spice to enhance the arousal in their relationships. And, and I think that's, in many ways, kind of a, an interesting rationalization or justification. Because in truth, what it does is it actually now moves them away from their partner as the person who is stimulating them, as the person that they find arousing. And what they're doing is they're transferring their arousal, you know, from an image on a screen or some, uh, you know, something that they're pulling up on a website, and that's what they're using to generate the arousal. And then they're trying to make the argument that that enhances their experience with their partner. And I think that that's, you know, part of me neurologically says, well, okay, I understand how that happens, but it's really sort of a, a silly rationalization because at the end of the day what you now are doing is relying on someone else to get you aroused other than your partner. You're relying on an image on a screen rather than the person themselves. And the implicit message there is, is that the partner sort of steps back and says, well, I guess I'm not sufficient to arouse you. You need something else other than me. And in a healthy sexual relationship, that is not what you want to be communicating to your partner. And whether you feel like, that, uh, like pornography isn't communicating that to your partner, in reality, that is what is implicitly being communicated. It's not the porn comes right out and says, you're insufficient. It doesn't have to say that because that's the message underneath it. So many, many women who have partners who are watching porn a lot will often say to me that they feel like they often have to compete with, with, with these porn actresses for the attention of their man. Yes, that's very true. And I think that's one of the things that many men don't realize that in watching pornography, what they are doing is they're cultivating in themselves a set of expectations about what is needed in order to kind of be sufficiently aroused. And there's no way that one woman can compete with you know the the rest of the female <laughs> you know population. Uh, and so if you're if you're thinking about you know women who are airbrushed, and so often in pornography, there's a lot of you know, uh, luck goes into making a pornographic movie. You know, there's there's makeup, there's you know high high definition, uh, there's uh, you know so much that goes into creating this sort of uh, you know artistic experience. Even though it's really not art, what it does is it creates an unrealistic set of expectations about what it means to be a woman. And so men are training themselves into needing this, but what they're now doing is they're having their partners or, or women or, that know that this is going on, you know, she can't do that, she can't compete with that. And so what it does in essence is it causes her to also, you know, ha have low self-esteem or to feel like she just can't compete because the reality is she can't compete. And, but she shouldn't be asked to compete and I think that's the problem. Yeah.